Dr. Brooks. Welcome to Healthy Kids Corner. I am really excited to talk about Asperger's Syndrome today. I know I shouldn't say it, but they are some of my favorite, favorite children to see in the practice. And I wanted to just explain what Asperger's Syndrome is and what some of the symptoms may be. So if you're looking for maybe some direction on what your kid maybe has that they're struggling with, or you just want to understand a little bit more, I just wanted to go through a quick overview. So Asperger's syndrome is an autism spectrum disorder. Uh, Asperger children are considered to be on the quote, high functioning end of the spectrum. And it's affected children and adults have difficulty with social interaction and exhibit a restricted range of interests and or repetitive behaviors compared to those children that are diagnosed with different forms of autism spectrum disorders. The children with Asperger's syndrome do not have significant delays or difficulties in language or cognitive development. Most, if not some, demonstrate precocious vocabulary and are extremely, extremely bright. That's not to say that children with autism are not bright, they are. Every child that I've ever seen on the autism spectrum disorder are very, very, very bright and intelligent children. The children with Asperger's tend to be a little bit more difficult to, you know, point out in the crowd, so to speak, because they don't have the typical language delays that a child with autism has, and they do not exhibit the typical delays that a child with autism has. So some parents have a real difficulty getting a diagnosis. That's not to say that you need a diagnosis to get help for your child. This is simply just to give a little background. Um, the behaviors and symptoms that are often associated with Asperger's syndrome, it doesn't mean that if your child has one of these or all of these, it really it's just, this is just a list. It's not really all inclusive and it's not to say that if they have one, only one thing of the, the list of things I talk about or, or discuss, that they don't have Asperger's. So every child on the autism spectrum presents differently, right? And some of them have tons of symptoms and some of them have like one. So here's a little list. Um, again, these, these widely vary in degree. So limited or inappropriate social interactions. So this is probably the number one thing that the children struggle with the most. It's a little awkward, they're socially uncomfortable, they don't know the appropriate things to say in a situation as far as carrying on conversation. They tend to have robotic or repetitive speech. They have challenges with nonverbal communication. So things like reading facial expressions or gestures and expressions are very difficult for them to, to pick up on. Uh, jokes and humor, sarcasm, right over their head. Not something that they really grasp and understand as a joke. Uh, the tendency to discuss their, themselves or the things that they're interested in rather than things that other children are interested in. So for example, parents will come in uh, that are undiagnosed and tell me things like, well, if another child wants to play Legos with Joey, then he'll play Legos. He'll, he'll, he'll go through every Lego and he'll build things and he'll talk about them and and no problem, but if the child comes over and wants to ride bikes or, you know, play, play a game on the iPad that doesn't interest Joey, then they want nothing to do with them and he'll go and play on his own. So it's, it's kind of like they're real social or really engaging as long as it's a topic and or activity that they are interested in. They tend to be obsessive about spe specific things, specific topics. Uh, for example, I had a girl come in with Asperger's years ago and she knew everything there was about nutrition. She was into cooking, she was into preparing, and she could go on and on about the nutrient value of different recipes and what's in this and what's in that and different types of places. I had, I had another child who was obsessed with cleaning products and he could name off cleaning products and what they do and what they're used for. So they tend to get very finitely obsessed and know everything there is to know about those topics. Um, the other thing is lack of eye contact. This is a, this is a struggle for, for parents because they want to have reciprocal conversations. And a lot of times a child with Asperger's will be looking this way or looking that way and talking and not engaging. And it's not it's not a form of, of disrespect, which is how we as adults take it. It's really something that they're, 
they're uncomfortable doing or they don't really know that they should be doing because that means you're you know engaging another person right when you look them in the eye so it's again that's another that's another thing you'd want to look for and then one-sided conversations again Everything is about what I'm, you know, what I'm interested in, not what you're interested in. I'm going to tell you everything. I'm going to shove all this information down your throat, whether you want to hear it or not. And then awkward movements and or mannerisms. This, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Of course, it just makes me, it reminds me of my, one of my favorite TV shows. If you've ever seen The Big Bang Theory, you might want to YouTube it and look at some clips. But uh, Sheldon on the show, he's, I think I would say the star of the show, he is... Uh, really the definition of Asperger's to me when you look at his mannerisms. Genius, bright, funny, doesn't understand sarcasm, doesn't understand relationships, doesn't see the point in having a girlfriend, does awkward things, has awkward mannerisms. So I, I just think it's a very, very great thing to watch that show particularly if you have older children that feel left out or they feel like they don't get it, I think that they might really be able to gravitate and understand that character and or yourself or your family. So really, really great show. If you have a child with Asperger's, there's lots of things that can be done from a functional medicine standpoint, GI repair, nutrient deficiencies, diet changes. So you can check out our website at www.mychildwellness.com for more information. If you would like to get some more education about maybe what's ailing your child, I do offer clinician and parent courses. The parent courses are free. We do them once a month. And you can see the schedule at www.dramberbrooks.com under education. We page. You can also see the recorded parent webinars that we've done. So if you'd like to listen to those, feel free. You can follow me on Facebook at Whole Child Wellness. We post lots of great information for parents there. We're on Twitter at Whole Child, the number four U. Our YouTube channel is Whole Child Wellness. And I do have about 16 more videos aside from this one today. So you can check those out and see if any of them interest you. Go ahead and feel free to share any of our videos with your family and friends. Getting the education out to our community is why I do these videos and why I love sharing my information with you. So I will see you next week. Have a great one. Bye.